Let's look at how to get all of the different preferences set on your computer as well as inside ProPresenter to get you going for the first time. So inside ProPresenter, let's go to ProPresenter and then down to Preferences. So the first thing you'll see is automatically check for updates so the program will automatically update for you. The next thing you'll see is our library folder. ProPresenter is built on the idea of libraries of documents and you can have multiple libraries of documents. So right now we have the default library, but we can add, remove, or edit library. So I'm gonna add a library. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna add. Then I'm gonna go to ProPresenter 6. And I'm gonna scroll down and you'll see I've already set up a folder called Youth and it has some different documents in it and I'm gonna hit select. Now when I hit done, I can go in here and you can see I can select my youth or my default and you'll notice on the left side of the screen here that the uh, library changes what documents are in there. So we can easily switch between libraries and we can also add more libraries along the way if we want. Next we can set our logo icon that can be used for the logo button so you can cut to a logo at any time and whether or not you want that to preserve aspect ratio. Below there is where all of our support files are saved, so we can do for only this user, all users, or custom path. The same for media repository. Where do we want all of the media that's imported inside ProPresenter to be held? And we can actually tell ProPresenter to automatically manage this media. So when I check this, it's going to uh, tell ProPresenter to move all of my media to specific folders for me along the way and manage my media much like iTunes does. Below here you'll see search paths and when I enabled that manage media automatically it added a few different search paths and we can easily add more search paths. These are basically locations where media could be stored that you want ProPresenter to check when it first opens to try link up media inside your documents. Below there we can enable our copyright display. CCLI requires you to display copyright information on at least one slide during the presentation of copywritten lyrics. So you can set this to first or last slide, first and last, or if you want to you could set it to all slides. Over here we can type in our number, and then we can go to CCLI layout to change the way this is seen. So we have some different tokens that we can use and then we can edit the template of how these tokens are shown. Below there you can see CCLI reporting which you can find out more about in another in-depth tutorial. You also have the ability to reset all your preferences and even revert back to a previous set of preferences. Next let's go to our display settings. The first setting here is saying that we want ProPresenter to be at the topmost layer so that if some other window or program is open on our secondary screen, ProPresenter will always be at the very top. We can also tell our output to scale and we can enable stage display. Now you can find out more about stage display in an in-depth tutorial on how to configure this and set this up. Now below here you'll see all of the different displays that we have hooked up and you can see right now our output is set to a secondary screen and if we enabled our stage display it would actually be on our regular screen. So if you had a stage display you would need a third screen and you would want to have that stage display dragged over to that other screen. We can drag these around and place them wherever we want. We can set specific height and widths. We can also set a screen color when there's nothing on the screen, and we can do corner pinning, which also has a in-depth tutorial. Now let's look at the actual system display settings if you're only seeing one screen right now. So I'm gonna to go to system display setting, and this is gonna bring me to my display settings for my computer. Now if you're only seeing one screen, most likely in the arrangement tab, you'll see that it's set up to mirror displays. We don't want to mirror displays, we want our secondary display to show different content than our normal screen. So we want to make sure mirror displays is turned off. You can also go in here and change different resolutions. One tip if you're not finding the resolution you want is to alt or option click on the scaled button and it will show a lot more options of different resolutions that you can choose. So if you're looking for something specific, you can likely find it in there. The other thing that we're gonna do while we're inside our computer's preferences is we're gonna go back and we're gonna go to desktop and screensaver. In here, under the screensaver settings, we're going to make sure that it's set to never. We don't want our screensaver to accidentally turn on during a presentation. 
Also, it's a good idea to go to hot corners and make sure none of your hot corners are set up just in case you have a volunteer who's working on this computer and they don't know that if they hover over a corner, something's going to happen and start freaking out during your presentation. And last, I would highly recommend that you change your desktop background from whatever was defaulted on your computer to a solid black color. That way, as you're going through your presentation, if something would happen and you would need to close ProPresenter, it would go to a black screen instead of seeing a mountain range or starry galaxy. We can close this out now that we're finished. Next we'll go to labels and in the labels area we can set the different labels that we have for slide labels and groups. So we can set uh, slide labels for blank slides and what color it has and verse slides. And we can also say whether or not we want to show video and image bin tags. So if you don't want to show those tags, we can turn that on and off here as well. And if we wanted to add a group, we could easily add a new group in. So let's say we want to add a bridge. We can add a bridge and then we can go in here and we can set what color we want the bridge to be. So maybe we want the bridge to be yellow. So now that's added in and we have that as an option to use. Next we'll go to live video and this basically lets us choose our sources so we can use the built-in camera or any other source our computer can see. Same with audio, any sources that we want there. Next, under the Network tab, we can set all of our different network settings. So the first thing is, if we want to use any of the network settings, we need to enable network. So we're going to enable network, and we can name what this computer will be seen as on the network. So we can call this ProPresenter Mac, or Sanctuary Mac, or Youth Mac. Um, you can also go in and enable master control if you're using that module. If you want to use the ProPresenter uh, iPhone or iPad remote, you can enable that there. And you can also enable the stage display remote. And you can enable the text stream to go to Pro Video Player. Next, we'll go to Sync. And we have two different options here for Sync. We have Cloud and Local Sync. And each one of these has a specific tutorial that you can check out at the website. Next, you'll see the services area, and this allows you to log into all of the different connected services. So you can log into Planning Center Online. If you're going to use any of the social media features, this is where you can log into Instagram or Twitter, as well as if you want to use Song Select, you can log in here as well. Next, under the Advanced tab, we can first look at our Import Video Slash Image Scale Behavior. Basically, what we're doing here is saying that when a background gets imported, do we want it to stretch to fill, scale to fill, or scale to fit? Stretch to fill means it's going to disregard the aspect ratio of the image and just going to stretch it to fill the entire area of the screen. Scale to fill means it's going to respect the aspect ratio, but it might crop off the top or sides of an image to make sure it fills the entire output of your screen. Last is scale to fit, which means that the image is going to be as large as it can while still preserving the aspect ratio. I prefer this setting, so I'm going to set it to scale to fit. And same for foregrounds, you can see this is already set to scale to fit, so I'll leave that there. Next is an option that changes the way the spacebar functions inside ProPresenter. By default, the spacebar goes to the next item inside a document. But with this option selected, when we hit the spacebar, it's going to pause video and we can even option click on a video which will show the first frame of video on the screen and then we can hit the spacebar to start playback. So let's look at how this works. So I'm going to close this out and go to the song. So if I click on this, it's going to start playing. And if I hit the space bar, instead of going to the next slide, you'll see it stops playback. If I hit space bar again, it's going to start playback. Now, we also have the option, I'm going to clear this all out. I'm going to option click on this slide and you'll see that it's thrown the video on the screen, but it's not playing. Now I can hit the space bar to begin playback. Now if you want it to function just like normal, we'll go back to preferences and we'll disable this option. Below here we have an audio option where we can change how many uh, audio channels we have as well as we can set a millisecond delay of our audio if we need to change the sync of our audio in our video. 
And last, we have an option to render as anamorphic. This is an option if you have a device that requires a 4x3 size, even though it's 16x9 content. And finally, we have our Modules tab, which allows us to enable specialty modules that can extend the capabilities of ProPresenter. You can try out all of these modules by hitting the Demo Modules button. That way you can test out all of their features before you decide to buy. When you do this, it's going to add a watermark to your output while you're testing. Now I'm going to close this out to show you one other thing you might want to do to customize ProPresenter for you. The last thing is you can customize this user interface up here. So if we want to change what buttons we see or how they're laid out, we can right click and do Customize Toolbar. When we do that, we can drag buttons around and place them in new spots. We can also add different uh, buttons to the interface that might not be there. And we can say if we want to use small sizes, and we can change if we want it to be icon only or text only.